Hey, it's me, the Soy Pill. After suffering through three other Trump events, I somehow thought it was a good idea to pay $500 and do it one more time before the election, this time in Duluth, Georgia. And all of my friends were smart enough not to go, so almost all of the footage is POV. Small update on the Trump texts, yes, they're still coming in, but also my targeted ads now believe I'm a Trump supporter and try to bait me with Melania bikini pics. I flew into the Atlanta airport, which may be the most American stereotype airport I've ever been in. They have the usual signs reminding people not to bring their firearms in, but also spinning cyberpunk holograms reminding you, once again, no guns allowed. And when announcing the train stops, instead of using the NATO phonetic alphabet, they do this. I died a little inside imagining this being a European's first experience in America. Arriving in Duluth, the first person I ran into was the Prince of Darkness himself, Satan. Do you think people view you as untrustworthy? No. But last week, Dick Cheney endorsed Kamala Harris, but now you're out here endorsing Donald Trump. What's up with that? We'll, we'll take what we can get. <laughs> All right, thank you, Satan. Speaking of counter-protesters, there were surprisingly more here than at Coachella, and I talked to them to show my support. These guys faced just as much nastiness as I did in Arizona. Oh, Front. More than a few times, trucks would drive by and roll coal, or burn rubber, right in front of them, covering them with a thick black cloud of smoke and carcinogens. It's a good thing climate change isn't real. One of the protesters was approached by a man who called himself independent, but was wearing nothing but Trump gear, and I was sad to see that she was a little underprepared for questions and confrontation. Why are you going to vote for Harris? Why would you vote for Harris? Well, for one, I've watched Trump since the 80s. I don't like him, never liked him. Whether you he like Trump or not, what has she done? She is going, she has been a great vice president. Done what has she done? I've been looking, I've been searching for answers of what she's done. I can't find anything she's done. She, um, she uh, brought down the big banks for, after like I said, not everyone is great at debating, and props to her for coming out here and being politically engaged. But you should at least have a boilerplate answer if someone asks you why you're putting all of your effort into this. I tried to step in and help her, and the supposedly independent voter went on to defend every single one of Trump's positions. I have other Kamala opinions if you want to hear me. I really appreciate a lot of what she's doing with the progressive politics, like uh, keeping abortion legal. I care about that personally. I, I think support it's that. 14 to 16. 14 to 16 weeks. You know you're pregnant. I've seen cases where people's pregnancies go wrong in the later months, and they're like, hey, if this is the of life course. of the mother, I think those should be supported. And, and, and I think Trump and Harris both support that. The way that Trump's handled it with the overturning of Roe v. Wade and handing it back to the states is even if you do support that, there are certain states that it doesn't matter. It's a legal period. Doctors are afraid to but perform it this. Should have, it should have been returned to the states. Yeah. There have been more abortions performed in 2024 than in 2023. Okay. So it's not like they can't get them. Well, in certain states they can't, right? Well, and also they're trying to prosecute people for crossing the border, right? I'm not sure I'm a fan of that either. I'm probably not either. It was pretty frustrating hearing him use this abortions in 2024 statistic, but then clearly acknowledge that abortions are banned in certain states and they're floating the idea of blocking women from crossing borders for abortions. He somehow can acknowledge that there are entire states where women have no access and might be punished, but thinks it's not that bad because the overall number went up. Meanwhile, there were some counter-counter protesters. What's sir, what's the go for? Go for Trump? Go for, go for, go for Trump. Trump. All right, thank you, go for Trump. I really like this sign from a Trump supporter where Trump is depicted as a muscly 80s action hero. One, because the most famous 80s action hero just endorsed Kamala. And two, because he's holding some weird AI-generated M60 that has an RPG instead of a barrel. Very on brand for Trump to be flaunting immense power that, upon slight scrutiny, is completely dysfunctional. Some things that immediately stood out to me are this stupid f***ing Bitcoin Cybertruck, this very confused group who don't know that gay marriages can't be performed in Israel, this guy's sick beard, this RFK station with 1980s workout machines who encourage Americans to be healthy, coincidentally completely untouched by the Trump supporters. My last videos must have inspired some large news outlets to do investigative reporting because I met some high-profile reporters from The Atlantic and The New York Times. They asked me to remain anonymous so I don't have their names or pictures here, but go to each of the websites and pick the most interesting reporters. Those are the people I met. The one from The Atlantic asked to interview me and whipped out his recorder and said, 
So why are you here? Why do you support Trump? I told him the truth and said that I opposed almost every policy that Trump has. And he immediately hit stop on his phone and said, slightly frustrated, I'm here for Trump supporters, man. So if you don't like the guy, why do you even come here? And with perfect comedic timing, one of the t-shirt vendors trying to sell his Say No to the Ho shirts walked by singing this song. Say no to the ho. So I just pointed at him and said, that's why. Speaking of shirts, there wasn't too much new merch that I haven't already shown you in previous videos. And that's partly because these guys, like me, have been following Trump around the country to make their money. But you may remember the vendor wearing the T-Pain hat from my Arizona video. And look at that, I ran into him again. Ladies and gentlemen, observe a man who is embarrassed to explain to me why he supports Trump. Some of the new shirts I did see were a little questionable, telling you to join militias and guillotine the government. I don't know if I just missed these last time or if Georgia Trump supporters like saying the quiet part out loud. Another thing of note were these Trump-themed bongs. It seemed a little bit like a classic case of not knowing your audience. Is weed legal here in Georgia? No. <laughs> <laughs> and as I expected, by the time the rally was over, none of them had been sold. Again, I didn't buy anything because I really didn't want to contribute to the Trump campaign. And of course, nothing was really <laughs> worth buying. Okay, I caved and got the Trumpicorn. Here's my Kamala Harris donation. If you're wondering what a Trumpicorn is, the explanation I got from the seller was, you know how cats have nine lives? Well, they tried to assassinate Trump two times. And well, unicorns have like unlimited lives. Once again, they were handing out free copies of The Great Controversy. And holy shit, there must be an Indiana Jones warehouse full of these, because they have boxes and boxes. I also secured my own copy of the Japanese book, where Trump is the reincarnation of George Washington, and the author interviews his ghost. Interestingly, the man giving away the book about Jesus coming back to life and bringing about the biblical end times doesn't believe in any of that silly spiritual stuff. You're both handing out free books. Is there any competition here? No. This is a book about uh, Donald Trump is the reincarnation of George Washington, and there's an interview with the spirit of George Washington in there. I'll tell you right now, I don't believe in spiritualism where someone dies and they're they're haunting and yeah, coming yeah, back yeah. and talking to other people. Uh, I believe that those are demons, as what the Bible describes. And speaking of handing out useless crap, they also handed us or put them on the windshield of parked cars unsolicited ads for a conservative credit card. Koigen. It's like a normal credit card, except instead of competitive rewards or low interest rates, it takes a portion of your transactions and donates them to conservative causes. So basically, if you're struggling financially, you can opt in and lose even more money. This Trump rally went even worse than the Coachella one. Once again, thousands of people patiently lined up and waited hours to see Trump, again in the blazing sun. Look at all those chickens. And once again, when the venue hit capacity, they sent everyone else home. And this time, there was no cycling out people who were leaving early, just a hard cutoff. Some people complained and insisted that they had a ticket, but most of the supporters didn't let it get them down. Are you disappointed you couldn't get in, or are you just happy to be here we're and have just, the support? We're just ready to, we're just happy to support, brother. Did you uh, early vote? Well, um, to you tell know, you, to, to tell you the truth, <laughs> I can't vote yet, but I will be able to can't, yeah? soon. You're 17. Barely. I'm 16 and a half. <laughs> Why can't you vote yet? Do you mind me asking? Um, the, the same reason that that cr uh, crackhead, what is his, what's his name, the crackhead? He oh, can't. You lied on a gun form? No. <laughs> Wish it was that easy. <laughs> you ever, you ever heard of a man named Barry Seal? I haven't. I'm his son. Okay. Yeah, we, we, uh, I'm a pilot. Okay. Just, I will leave it at that. Now, I had to look this up, but Barry Seal was a commercial airline pilot who became a drug smuggler for the cartel. You might have seen him portrayed by Tom Cruise in the film American Made. So if this guy was telling the truth, he's not only the son of Barry Seal, but also a pilot convicted of smuggling drugs for the cartel. After I was denied entry, I decided to take my frustration out of the gym, because surely exhausting myself wouldn't come back to bite me later. So 
but something compelled me to go back to the rally, as if pushed by a higher power, and lo and behold, the RFK station was finally occupied, and I was challenged to do 24 pull-ups for a free hat. Admittedly, those last ones were half-assed, so to complete the challenge, I had to ride that stupid gazelle machine for 20 seconds. I can feel the vaccines leaving my body. But a free hat wasn't all I got for coming back. I also had my most fruitful interview with a Trump supporter. I discovered her when encountering this baffling coalition of Japanese nationals who also love Trump. Unfortunately, when I tried to ask them why they were there, none of them spoke English. And of course, I'm a filthy gaijin who can't speak Japanese. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe they like Trump because he also can't speak English. I hope they now go and take a look at the oranges, the oranges of the uh, uh, investigation, the beginning. But right next to them was this fanatic religious Trump supporter who believed that Trump was chosen by God. We'll call her Jane. This election is not about Republican Democrat. It's a spiritual warfare. Exactly. It's spiritual warfare. Either we bow our knee and submit to Almighty God and he heals our our land or we will be destroyed. Do you believe That's, Trump was chosen by God like, uh, like after I the election? I believe that God God has chosen Trump for such a time as this. Yes, I do. God is looking for a humble man, a man to accomplish his purposes. Everybody has a sinful past. I have a sinful past. You have a sinful yeah. past. You do. But that I'm not going to. I'm going to heaven. I'm an English teacher. I'm an English and Spanish teacher, but I'm also in law school. But I don't teach in, in the public schooling system. The curriculum that they're trying to push in Gwinnett County Public Schools is in my opinion, dangerous. It's indoctrinating students. What's the worst thing? Okay, uh, example. sure. Right now, actually, there is a new sex ed curriculum that's called Health Smart. But I have read some of the lessons, and one lesson is on gender identity. And I read the lesson, and it said, you know, sex is what is assigned to you at birth. You see, even the language here is manipulative. And gender, the definition there was, gender is how you feel. It's, it's so surreptitious. Keep your agenda out of it. What's interesting is that she called the trans education surreptitious because of the way they disguise sex ed with positive language. But when asked about the RFK slogan, Make America Healthy Again, she said this. Make America Healthy Again? Yeah, I think that's great. That's, okay. Yeah, healthy is a good word, but RFK is anti-vax to the point of having aided in the deaths of 83 people in Samoa. And if Trump wins, he'll be in charge of our health agencies. Now, none of that rhetoric was particularly new to me. But what really blew my mind is that I actually got Jane to admit she was pro-trans, whether or not she truly realized it. Can I ask a weird question? Yeah, of course. Okay. This if you is... were to look at me, yeah. would you say I'm a boy? Yes. Okay. What if I told you I was born a girl? Would I still appear a boy to you? If you told me you were born a girl? Yeah, I was born female, but I got TRT and a mastectomy and all that. I mean, just looking at you, no, I would say you're still a male. So, okay. Yep, Jane said that even if I was a trans man who was born a woman, she would still call me a man based on my appearance. It's not exactly all in support of the trans community, but coming from a conservative, especially this conservative, I'll call that a win. And for any trans men in my audience, this is now your bar for passing. I also had to ask Jane some very difficult abortion questions. What's more innocent than a growing human life? A puppy? Just, what's that? A puppy. Okay, okay, some learning. You asked, I had so, to answer. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. If you were running into a burning building mm -hmm. and there was a room, and on one side of the room there was a baby in a crib, and on the other side there were 20 implanted embryos, two weeks old, and you could only save one of them, which would you save? I hate your question. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> My answer to that is I would always save the baby because mm -hmm. I value that baby's already developed consciousness, functioning brain. Why do brain. I have to choose? I would I would save both. That's <laughs> such a horrible dichotomy. I hate that. But but if you ha like if you had to put worth, would you not say that that to your child has at least a little more worth as because it's already a fully formed human being? Wow, that's such a hard question. 
obviously, you know, I would want to save the child who's living and breathing mm -hmm. first because I see the imminent threat. Right. So I, I would implore you. I know you're, I'm not going to change your mind on it, no, but just ahead. to consider the fact that you would save the one that there's an imminent threat to, that baby, why people might lean a little more pro-choice. Final question. I'll sure. let you go. Sure. Same situation, but instead of an IFB on the table and a baby, it's a baby and 10 monkeys. Oh, definitely the baby. <laughs> That's not even a hard question. That one's not hard. Okay. That's not a hard question. Those no. poor monkeys. No. Okay. At this point, my phone was running out of memory, and Jane and I had to walk to our cars, which of course meant that something really weird that no one would ever believe was about to happen. Out of nowhere, some random lady in a minivan swerved up to us like she was doing a drive-by and just started blabbing about Trump, like we weren't in the middle of a parking lot at midnight. Jane seemed completely unfazed by this and joined in on the Trump rhetoric as our minivan lady, who was African, complained about black people in America being lazy and schools teaching about the gays. Now my phone did have enough memory for a picture, which was funny because Jane wore my newly won anti-vax RFK Make America Healthy hat, and our minivan driver, who worked with a nearby pharmacy, wore a shirt that said, ask me about free vaccines. Truly the widest and most incoherent coalition since the side that encompasses Dick Cheney and AOC. I think my biggest takeaway from all of these events, but especially this one, is that even the craziest Trump supporters can be reached with kindness. In just an hour, I was able to get Jane to question her positions and see that not all Democrats were crazy and hateful. She even said she would pray for me and my family, which is a genuine gesture from someone who believes in the power of prayer. I know it can be hard to talk to these people when their policies would cause demonstrable harm to you, your friends, and your family, but there's value in saving that negativity for the internet fights while trying to break through the onslaught of conservative media that tells them to hate trans people or demonize the poor. I acknowledge that looking like I do allows me to navigate these communities better and that not everyone can stomach it. But if you're voting tomorrow, I implore you to dive into the deep end and grab your crazy uncle out. And if you're worried because your crazy uncle will kick and scream and drown you, at least take your apathetic friend who never votes. Thanks for watching. Big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, but especially my premium supporter, Nipple Fisting. Moving forward, all of my Patreon subscribers will be getting my videos early, and I'll be uploading cut interview content, so be sure to check it out. And don't forget to type 1 to end the deep state.